Hi everyone, welcome to part two of what will be a three-part series on my small journey on picking new motor mounts and installing them in the A4B7. This video is going to be about comparing the old OEM mounts, both the, the good one on the driver's side and the blown one. Uh, you should go back and watch my previous video on how I got here and why I'm doing this in the first place and all about finding leaking mounts. Uh, and then here are the two replacements from 034 Motorsport. These are the street density solid motor mounts. In addition to the comparison, I'm also actually doing the work, so I'm going to give you an abbreviated DIY to changing out your motor mounts. One of my first impressions was simply the, the size and overall mass of both of these motor mounts. I don't know why I was surprised, but I mean, I have a hand that can pretty much palm a, a basketball, and this thing was huge. I guess that makes sense because it's got to hold the engine and deal with a bunch of stress, but in general this was a, a larger item than I thought it would be. From the factory there also seems to be some color coding applied. So this is the driver's side mount, and you'll see later in the video I do reference the fact that the factory marks the bottoms as well with the same color. But apparently the bluish green, that is the driver's side, and yellow is the, the passenger side. Somewhat obviously, the passenger side is also the only one that came out with a dust cover on it. I don't know if that's intentional or not, I also assume that these are the original mounts to the car, but only one actually had the cover on it. Um, and that's kind of weird, I suppose, because this one is actually more out in the open than the other one. Now here's the passenger again with the cover off this time. What is a little interesting is that, I mean, this car has 109,000 kilometers on it, and there are some very minor cracks in the, uh, the rubber material. And here's the number one offender. This is why we're doing this at all. This is the mount that leaked, and you can kind of tell that it came out from that particular position. Uh, where it was on the bottom of the car, roughly speaking, uh, this was the front, and this is the cabin of the car. Uh, so the back side seems to have leaked. I suppose it's also worth mentioning that these mounts don't sit flush, or at least this one sits the least flush out of the two OEM ones. It's actually angled quite a bit. Um, I think something like that. Uh, so maybe that's what happened. And here are the new ones. Not that I'm much for an unboxing, but just to give you a quick idea, comes with the torque numbers on the top, which is great. Always save some time from searching around in manuals or the internet to figure out what those torque specs are. And this is more or less what you'll get right here. And here's a minty fresh one that I opened just for you. Now, both of these come with dust covers, which is kind of nice. And they have uh, some protection around the, the threaded top and bottom parts. One thing that I want to do is actually weigh all these different mounts. I have a theory that the blown mount is going to be less than the good one. That one's kind of obvious because there's liquid missing out of it. But I also expect the new 034 one to be a bit heavier. Uh, I want to see how much. So the one that leaked is coming in at 1 pound 10 ounces, which is also 737 grams. The good mount that I had is weighing in at 1 pound and 10.1 ounces which is 740. So really we're just talking about three-ish grams of liquid of hydraulic fluid in these mounts. And the new hotness 034, that's coming in at one pound and 11 and a half ounces or 700, 780 grams. So we're talking about almost a 40 gram difference, which is not massive of course, but percent wise it's, it's something. So let's talk about construction, because that is supposed to be the thing that 034 touts as the, the big selling point to why you would go with one of their pieces versus replacing with some sort of OEM, whether it came off of uh, an A4 or not. And the first thing that's hard not to notice is that the construction at the top is different. Um, I did go online to make sure that these OEM mounts actually do come formed like that from the factory. Uh, it did occur to me at first that potentially they were the same, but after the first time you install it and the weight of the engine is dropped down, maybe it compresses the top. But if you look on the ECS site, the shape is the same, so I'm assuming that that is intentional. So on this one right here, it is more conical. Okay, so here's what I think might be the most significant difference. 
Now forgive my unprofessional measuring tool here, but keeping the bottom level, so I'm taking out of play the fact that the, the studs are different lengths, the 0341 being a little bit longer than OEM, but the bases, where they're actually going to be sitting in the motor mount brackets, being the same at the bottom, there's a pretty significant difference between the size of the housings between these two units. The 0341 is shorter total, and the mounting point, if we're talking about total distance top to bottom, bottom mounting bracket to top mounting bracket, and it's going to sit right here, so technically this distance right here is, is not that important. It's where is it actually going to be attaching at its lowest point, right there and right there. They're different heights, so that means when the uh, 034 mounts are installed, the engine is going to be sitting actually a little bit higher. Another difference is one that I just mentioned, which is the stud length. Now, although that won't impact how the, uh, the mounts are actually secured to the top and bottom brackets, I can tell you, and I'll show you in the upcoming DIY, that the stud length does change ever so slightly your ability to slide in and out these brackets because you're having to push and pull both the mount and brackets apart to slide them into where they need to go. So that can actually hinder you just a little bit. The last visual difference that I noticed is simply that when the locating or the alignment dowels are lined up, there's more holes in the bottom of the 034 mount. I don't know what these holes actually are meant to do. As far as I can tell, they don't do anything. Uh, they look a little cooler on 034, but I expect the difference to be not tangible. So now that you know the difference between the motor mounts, if this is the same route that you're going to take with your project, I'm going to do a bit of a DIY for you as well. It's not going to be a DIY that you're probably used to seeing on the internet where you have to watch someone take out every single nut and bolt because I know you're smart enough to do that yourself without watching me, but I'll show you a few key moments along the way and I think it should help you out a little bit. Now I always like to refer back to my Haynes and Bentley manual if they have a process for the job that I'm doing, usually they do, to see what the professionals would be doing in the case like this and then I compare it against what I see as sort of the prominent DIY on the internet. The Haynes manual would have you jack up the car, take off the splash shield, then detach the starter motor cables. I'll show you what that is in a second, and I can attest that you do not have to do that, although what they're talking about is somewhat true. It does make part of taking the passenger side mount out a little annoying, but you definitely don't have to take it out. And if you have luck like I do with plastic, you don't want to touch it anyways. Then basically you're marking the dowel location that we already looked at, then supporting the subframe with the jack, and then removing three big bolts. I'll show you what those bolts are. I can also tell you that you don't need to take them all out. I might not even recommend you take them all out. Uh, one of them I think you should definitely keep in, uh, but I'll show you what those are. And then basically take out the mounts and replace them. First off, get the car up off the ground. I've elected to support the car using the pinch weld locations and not interfering with the lower control arms um, for the jack placement so I can give my body some more room to work. And I took the outside wheel off just to give myself more swing room when I'm working on that side and the car is about foot and a half off the ground. Now that the car is up, the next step is to take off the torque rod. Most people just refer to that as the snub mount arm. It's uh, bolted on to the bottom of the oil pan with three T5 bolts, but I used a six millimeter hex and that worked out just fine too. Uh, when you undo these three bolts, you just take them out entirely and depending on the engine position at this point, this rod may not actually come out of the mount up at the front here, uh, but that's okay. You can just let it dangle. It's not going to interfere with anything. Take out these two screws here holding in the front part of the air duct. Get that out of the way because you'll need it once you get to the passenger side of the motor mount shortly. Next up, it's time to take off the top bolt from each of the engine mounts. I like to start with the driver's side because it's quite simple. It's right out here in the open and you're going to be taking off that nut right there. You can use your 13 millimeter stubby wrench to easily get in here. Otherwise, you can still fit in a wrench and a socket. You just have to bend this hose a little bit to the side and it's no problem. Now coming to the passenger side, which is the infamously fun one, you'll be over here under the turbo. You're probably going to want to bend up this uh, heat shield a little bit to give your stubby wrench um, a larger swing path. And you can actually see the top of the wrench right there. And I'll show you in a moment from the bottom what that looks like. That's pretty much your, your swing path right there. It's going to be near the turbo, 
just out to the heat shield and back. I usually just stick my thumb or finger in it and my hand is backwards and I'm doing basically this type of movement uh, and that's the most effective way I've found to get uh, clearance enough to get the nut to go on or off. And here's the view from the bottom. So what I found to be the most effective is to use your left hand to come up behind the sway bar and go around the back of the mount. You can use your fingertips to feel around for the top of the stud on the mount itself and guide the ratcheting end of the stubby wrench onto it. And you can use your right hand to stabilize it from the front, uh, right by the piping for the side intercooler. Attached to the bottom of both subframe brackets is your front sway bar. You'll need to be getting this down and out of the way to give yourself more room to eventually take the bracket itself down. But all you have to do at this moment is take out these two 13 millimeter nuts on each side. Now that the front sway bar bracket nuts are off, you should have plenty of room to swing the sway bar down. And it's time to take off the bottom nut on each mount. You're going to want to do that now before you take out the three big bolts because if you do that, uh, you'll find that the mount is just spinning in place and you can't actually thread this nut off. On the bottom side of both motor mounts, uh, from the factory, there is a marking on one of the two holes that are in the bottom of the actual mount itself. So I haven't done anything to this one and it has this yellow marking on here. That is not your alignment point. It is the hollow circular metal nipple that's right there and that's what I've marked on uh, the underside of this mount. And for reference this is the underside of the driver side motor mount and again there is a green mark on the bottom side of this hole in the mount. I didn't do that either. This is the alignment nipple right there. So now that the top and bottom nuts are off both of the motor mounts essentially the mounts are being sandwiched between the weight of the engine on top of it and the subframe brackets below it. Now coming up soon we're going to be removing three big bolts on those subframes so that will remove the remaining stability that the engine has so we need to add it back. So what we're going to be doing is taking your jack and lifting up on the oil pan. You want to distribute the weight though because you don't want to be concentrating any force on your pan. I just used a 2x4 across this way and I did it just fine. Just take the weight of the engine and that's all you need for now. And the next step is to take out uh, these two uh, 18 millimeter bolts and we're on the driver's side here and on the back there is another one but just loosen it and take it about an inch out. So we're on the passenger side and you do need to drop out all three bolts so being one, two, and three. Uh, they all need to come out because here's the starter cable that the Haynes manual was talking about. So when you want to slide out that mount and here it is fully loose, I'll take it down it's impeded by the starter cable as long as it's still attached um, for a maximum depth that you can take this down. But you can see that I actually have my mount out. It's not there anymore. Um, so you can wiggle it out even with this cable attached and I recommend you do that. So we are on the driver's side of the car. The new mount I slipped in very easily but this is what I was talking about earlier when I said you do not need to take out all three bolts on this bracket. So the front two you do because this is how you get the, the hang of the bracket but that 18 millimeter bolt back there can stay in. Uh, it aligns the entire bracket, just gives you a nice hinging point in order to slip in uh, the new mount without having to drop everything down um, or having to hold it up with a third hand that you probably don't have. Here are all those bolts. So these were taken out of the passenger side but the reason that the bracket that I just showed you can hang down so low is because they're not all the same height. The back one, allowing the bracket to hang, is significantly longer than the other two. Coming to the Bentley manual now to find the final torques for the three bolts on each side on the bottom. Um, I did notice that the diagram doesn't actually match up to what I think is the, uh, the only correct possibility here. So anyone else with a Bentley manual out there, please confirm if this is true. Uh, this is the information I'm going off of. But clearly 32 uh, is a nut, um, but right here they're talking about bolts. But based on the fact alone they have two different sizes, an M8 and an M10, and uh, we have two smaller ones and one larger one, I'm going with 30 foot-pounds and 52 foot-pounds for the, uh, the three final bolts on each side.
As I've been tightening down the three 18 millimeter bolts on the driver's side, I noticed a bit of a, an alignment hack here. So a bolt in a hole is not just a bolt in the hole. If you look at uh, this outside bolt, for example, you can see some bare metal on the bottom left side of the bolt, meaning the bolt is not currently sitting in the bracket exactly where it used to be and I consider where it was from the factory to be the best place. But what I noticed is this hole up here, which does not actually have anything going through it ever, is a perfect alignment device. The holes should line up pretty much perfectly and that should align this bracket as well. So both mounts are now in and the subframe brackets and their three big bolts on each side are secured. So what we're gonna do now is just put the bottom and top nuts back onto the motor mounts. Now it's time to reattach the sway bar, or as the Bentley manual calls it, the stabilizer bar, back to the subframe, and all four of these nuts get attached at 18 foot-pounds. At this point, everything is secured down under the car, minus the snub mount bracket arm here, and you can take out the jack and let the engine put its weight back down onto the mounts and the subframe brackets. The final step was to put the three bolts into the snub mount bracket, connecting to the bottom of the engine but I've run into an issue that I'm really not that surprised about. So earlier when I was talking about the fact that the 034 mounts are a little bit taller than the OEM ones, well, those chickens have come home to roost because, as you can see, although I can get the back bolt in, the front two are off by what I'd probably say is the difference in height of those two mounts. So that's okay. Um, I already ran the engine to see if it would settle in a little bit, and it didn't, not enough at least. But what you'll want to do is just adjust the bracket. So this is uh, not OEM. This is the 034 Motorsport uh, snub mount and bracket as well. But there are slots here for this reason. So you can just loosen those up. And in my case, I'll want to shift the bracket up a little bit to give me some room. I have a unique problem of screwing up earlier and uh, breaking off one of the bolts. So this is just tack welded in place, which is going to stop me from moving this up today. But that's all you'll want to do to solve a problem like this if you run into it too. Finally, reattach the front of the air intake and you're done. You're sitting on two fresh engine mounts. Congratulations. Now, of course, I'm not done. In fact, this is the start of just another project, a project that's going to get in the way of giving part three to you guys. Um, I will do that soon enough, though, as soon as I possibly can. Uh, this kind of dovetails into my next video pretty good. I was going to do a bunch of things on the cooling system, um, including changing the water pump. So the front end of this car was going to come off pretty much no matter what. Uh, but now I really am going to do it. So what my solution is probably going to be to fix that stem mount bracket is get rid of the front bumper cover here. Uh, take out the rad support, pretty much dig all the way down until I get to the core support and I'm going to take it out and either machine in a new bolt to fix this once and for all or I'll replace it entirely. So stay tuned for both of those new projects. Thanks for watching.